Welcome, everyone, to District Divided, a DC sports podcast, more specifically, a Washington Commanders podcast. I am Amit. That is KDOT. This episode is a quick, quick recap of the San Francisco 49ers Washington Commanders game. Commanders, spoiler alert, lost uh, 27 to 10. So we're going to get into that in just a moment. One, want to wish you guys all a very happy new year. Two, we hope Christian Holmes is all right. Very scary moment in that game yesterday when he just fell over after talking yep. to Trent Williams. So thoughts and prayers with him. Hope he's doing well. Um, and if you enjoy the episode today, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, comment as you always do. We have 12 comments for the comment mailbag today, K dot. And what other thing do we need to do? Share this shit. Share this shit. Please. Share it. We would greatly appreciate it, you guys. And without also, further ado, go ahead. If any other piece of advice, I will say Getting super high and watching old wrestling matches is fucking awesome. I just want to share that with other people. It's just, it's a good thing to do. It's all on Peacock, the entire history of the WWF, WWE. It, there are a few things in this world that I've loved more in the last year. I just discovered this. The getting high as shit and watching old WrestleMania matches. Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker, WrestleMania 25. It was great. Oh, God, it was great. You did that yesterday? Oh, yeah, man. I, I think I, I've rewatched that match. I, I saw the Iron Claw, so I'm in like this big wrestling oh, movie right, again. Right. Woo! <laughs> Gets me. Yeah. Well, there's no after the pod today, but maybe we'll get into that in the next after the pod uh, when we get to it. But without further ado, let's get into the game yesterday. So the San Francisco 49ers came to our place, came to FedEx Field on New Year's Eve and took care of business. They beat us 27 to 10. They wrapped up the one seed with Philadelphia losing at home to Arizona, which is also important because that moves us up to the number two overall pick as of right now. Now, there's some strength of schedule stuff that we'll talk about maybe a little bit. But KDOT, uh, just real quick, your reaction to the game, Jacoby Brissett was supposed to start, suddenly popped up as questionable as soon as we were done recording. Our last episode tries out that hamstring and warm-ups. Not good to go. Sam Howells plays instead. Quick thoughts on the game. Quick thoughts were, at least initially early, we looked better than I thought we would. Um, there was a, there. There's always going to be, if you're in this game, there's clearly one team is far superior than the other team. So... Um, that was always there was no chance of winning this fucking game. But at least early on, Sam Howe was getting the ball out quick. The defense was scrambling, trying to make shit happen. Um, they looked live and like they had a lot of energy. There was certain aspects, and then the running game, Brian Robinson, those guys, man. There were certain elements of watching this game where I'm like, motherfucker, if y'all could play like this the whole goddamn year, things might have been a little different. Um, if you guys had started Sam Howell out with this sort of scheme, things might have been quite different this year. So I think there was aggravation um, in the way that the game itself kind of played out. There was expectedness in the way that the game played out. But I think it's just um, you hate getting to this point in the season and having the thought of what might could have been or what could have been. Mm. That fucking sucks. It blows. And I hate that shit. I hate it so much because it's insidious. It gets into your fucking brain. It makes you have more hope than maybe you necessarily need to for next year. And the sound, oh, they just need to do this thing, or they just need to do that thing, and we'll be okay. And it sets you up for fucking failure every goddamn time. So I think the 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 the, the grand scheme of it is this team has some talent. They're not being coached fucking properly, and there's no one with an overall mission statement for what it is they should be or what it is they should do yeah nothing like regret in a situation you can't control i will also say this that there is only one more week of all this and there is reason to be excited in the year 2024 if you're a commanders fan because we do have a lot of cap space this coming off season we're likely going to have it's nothing's official right uh but we're likely going to have a new gm likely going to have a new head coach uh so reasons for optimism for sure uh my quick take on the game 
Brian Robinson's super important to the offense uh, when we run the ball. And, and we had three starting linemen out, like you'd said. Um, when we run the ball, everything opens up. Terry becomes more alive because Sam suddenly has a bit more time to be able to throw. Um, it was nice to see Terry get in the end zone. Uh, yeah. So these are all just, you know, the little things of, hey, like KDOT said, this game went better than I thought it would too. And we lost by 17. So it speaks to where we are as a team right now. Not a good place, but there were a couple small positives from it. We had a lot of DBs out and then Tariq Castro Fields gets hurt so that he's out. Um, and so all things considered, it's a, it's about what we expected a little better, but it still resulted in a loss. So why don't we go ahead and talk about the, I guess, benefit of the loss, right? Because when we think about draft position and that is becoming the conversation here, we currently hold the number two pick, Kato. Okay, and, and we were talking a bit before this about uh, Justin Fields, about Chicago, because Chicago got themselves a nice win over the Atlanta Falcons, the Taylor Heineke led Atlanta Falcons. And there were chants of we want Fields, we want Fields over at Soldier Field. So, Kada, you had proposed, what was the question you had asked me? My question was, if the Chicago Bears, who've locked up the first uh, overall pick, which they have uh, via the Carolina Panthers and David Tempers dumbass. Uh, if given the opportunity that uh, Chicago is going to draft Caleb Williams and Justin Fields becomes available, would you be in play for Justin Fields if it costs you a second round pick? Right. And as of right now, K. Dot, I'm saying no, just because I want. It, it, it's tricky because I want a rookie quarterback that's like not experienced another NFL team that is just our guy, a part of the new culture, yeah. doesn't have any of the sort of baggage. Exper yeah, the baggage, because experience can be good. It can also be bad. And mm -hmm. so I don't know how it's going to look for Fields, but there's no denying the talent of Justin Fields. If we end up doing it, don't get me wrong. I would be excited uh, right for a second round pick. But if I have the choice as of right now, We'll probably go quarterback if we're going to pick at two overall. And there's still, you know, the Dallas game next week. And I am saying who knows about that because I could easily see us pulling a win out of our ass. No clue how, but I can see it. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully, um, hopefully we lose that game. Honestly, I mean, as much as I'd love to beat Dallas, just because it's fun to beat Dallas. I mean, this is a unique opportunity. I think it can help with the head coaching search. I think it can help get a general manager. It makes it a much more attractive destination. If we were to lose that game, that's where I currently. When's the last time we won a game? Um, 2023 last year. See, I think that there's still a, uh, Hey, they're a scrappy young team. And Sam Howell's launching the ball. We could do, this team's terrible, dog. This team's like, bad. Not, this team's very bad. Not like the as we said, the San Francisco game was so much closer than we thought it might be. We still lost by seventeen. It still could have been a lot worse because San Francisco clearly took the foot off the fucking gas. They were in cruise control. They were absolutely so. Like the the, the no, I like I I said it weeks ago. We're not winning another game. It's it's just not gonna happen. So just remove that. Um, <laughs> I was look the Justin Fields thing to me. Gets really, really. I don't know about you, but maybe it's remnants of the Dan Snyder era, where the higher we pick, the more nervous I am. Hmm. Um, in the sense of like, you you pick around like 15, 16, eh, you hit, you miss, eh, eh, eh. but you do a high profile. It becomes embarrassing when it doesn't fucking work out. Like when you look at Chase Young playing for the San Francisco 49ers, you're like, yep, you fucking morons. Like this, like th it feels like a failure, right? Like it feel and. W Outside of when you draft an offensive tackle here in the top five, it doesn't usually pan out that well for us just from a luck standpoint. And you look at RG3. That looked great in the beginning, and then it all fucking fell apart. So I don't know. I don't trust it. But the but the idea to me, look, all this what we do with the second pick, third pick, whatever the fuck, is all contingent on, I think me and you agree, that the GM and the head coach combination need to make that decision. So before anything happens, those two things need to be solidified. They need to be on the same page, right? Yes. But I'd say if I was the GM going into this next offseason, I was putting together my staff, I'm picking up Mike McDonald, I'm figuring out who he wants on offense, you'd have to fucking get a brick wall and put barbed wire around that son of a bitch to stop me from turning a second-round pick for Justin Fields. Now, I'm a Justin Fields fan. Um, mm -hmm. 
I think he's had to deal with a lot of bullshit in Chicago, which to me is all part of that. I understand the baggage thing, right? But I look at that as like almost character building. Like he's had to face adversity to the utmost degree. That offensive line that they put there for him in Chicago has been fucking god awful that mm-hmm. he had to kind of maneuver and get himself around. Um, you can finally see what he looks like when he has a weapon in DJ Moore. I like DJ Moore a lot. I still take Terry McLaurin and John Dotson over his ass. It's just me. Um, there, there's just an element to me that, like, if you can – we have two second-round picks, two third-round picks, right? If you can go and get that guy in Justin Fields that could be something um, and then spend that first-round pick on a Marvin Harrison because you're picking people to number two overall – or you're picking up a Joe Alt or uh, Olaf uh, Olaf Fashanu. We'll get you there at some point. I'll get there. Olaf Fashanu. Um, to me, that's like fuck yeah. Like that's like I just look at it from just a just a pure talent perspective. Would I spend a second round? Is Justin Fields if he was in this draft right now? Mm-hmm. Is he worth a second round? But fuck yeah. I get that it's almost. I get that you his contract be due after a year, which that, I know a that's lot, a big part that's a for huge me. Part. Yeah, but if he shows up and shows out, like of I, course, or if he doesn't, all right, Justin, cost us a second rounder. Yeah, but then it also costs you the opportunity to get someone and actually hit. Right. And so that's also part of the cost as well of this rental because he would be good enough that you're not going to be picking this high again. Can we agree on that? I probably, yeah. So there's also that cost to it as well. And so, again, as a fan base, and I get where you're coming from, KDOT, and I, I want to make this point here uh, quickly. As a fan base, yes, we have been scarred in the past. And the Dan Snyder era, see, the way things work is the owner gets to decide ultimately who the GM is going to be. The GM would then decide who the head coach is going to be. In our case, the owner would also decide who the head coach is going to be. Mm -hmm. Um, President of business operations, everything. Everything starts with the owner. Of course. And even when things go well, for example, when he got Marty Schottenheimer, we started two and six, we finished six and two, fires him anyway, just because they disagreed a whole lot. That was an example of a situation where we had some good signs at the end and some positivity moving into next season until he fired the damn coach. So when you have that guy at the very, very top, Mm -hmm. you are doomed to fail. Absolutely. Okay. Um, That is what we have dealt with for quite some time. Now, with the new owner, you have to... You have to give new ownership a chance, of course, and I think everybody is. But what that means is the very, very top of your structure has changed. It is, think of it as an expansion franchise. Think of it as a brand new team that you just received here in DC. That's what this is. So when we talk about being burned in the past, that past is no more. That's why this new year is exciting. That's why this upcoming week is filled with excitement. This could not have gone any better from a rebuild perspective outside of getting the number one pick. So you just need to be able to compartmentalize and go that the very top of our structure is different and therefore everything is different. It could be bad. They they could end up making a mistake with their GM and head coach, but this is a brand new opportunity with new people that are a bit more data-driven. I like that personally. You know, they've already hired Eugene Shen. We've talked about the Baltimore connections. It's already a step in the right direction. Of course. So just want to keep that in mind as well when thinking about the past, because people say, oh, we've done this before. We we have, but it wasn't, it's no longer, that's a different us. Done what before? What exactly before? Uh, drafting RG3, for example, missing in the top five, for example. Teams do miss in the top five. That well, is so a reality of the situation. I think, that's, I think that's why I'm saying the Justin Fields thing to me feels uniquely special. Is the 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 idea is, I don't recall us ever doing that. Um, like I don't recall many teams doing that. Like, um, what at least not us. A dude that's shown flashes very, very young that another team has just given up on. Um, this isn't Josh Rosen, right? This isn't like right. he, he hasn't shown anything on tape that just like, all right, yeah, guy, whatever. You got a dude that's clearly shown shit on tape that the other guys might look at Caleb Williams as a generational talent. There's only one quarterback that's looked upon as the generational talent in this draft. You might think that you might think highly of Jaden Daniels. Right. You might think highly of Drake May. 
but there's one leading into this that has been looked upon as a cut above the rest, and that's Caleb. So if you're Chicago and you say, fuck it, I'm going to do this thing, right? To me, the if you're looking at the analytics, if you're looking at all these things, to me, the safer bet is not necessarily spending that capital on a QB that you're not sure about or a QB in which, you know, my philosophy is to sit their asses for a year, right? So, like, the idea of coming out of this draft, getting a quarterback that has shown he has fucking talent, and also getting a cornerstone of the offense, potentially an offensive tackle. Mm-hmm. The boom, boom of that is fucking nuts to me. Like the, the idea that you could come out of here. Like when I say we're talking about the San Francisco game and this team is clearly outclassed by San Francisco. Washington's clearly outclassed by San Francisco. Mm-hmm. But there's also you got to go back to what one of my core tenets with this team is that there are certain position groups that absolutely need to be almost completely rebuilt. I'd look at linebacker. Um, I offensive line. I think that they're once again, if you could draft a tackle, or whatever. But offensive line, I, I, I think offensive line's a little closer than people might give it credit for, especially okay. when you look at that lineup that started, um, yesterday and look at the guys that are on there fairly fucking young. They just don't have enough reps together, and the philosophy of the offense is different. I think this team is more clearly a lot more talented than the coaching that they've received. Right? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So if that's the case, if you're looking at it from a rebuild standpoint, right, then I think that you got to be very strategic in what it is you're doing with the rebuild and not saying wholesale, we got to change for change's sake. Um, and if that's the case, to of me, course. but leaving this draft with a top five tackle and a quarterback that has shown that he's only gotten better behind a terrible offensive line. Let's say Joe Alt was in last year's draft. Okay, and mm-hmm. and you're the Houston Texans. So what you're arguing, and Justin Fields is available. So you would yeah. have, as Houston Texans GM, traded the uh, second round pick. So you're one hundred percent. I would have been thirty four overall or whatever, thirty three overall. Excuse me. And um, you would have taken Joe Alt and yeah. Justin Fields in Houston. But I would also say, see, it can go both ways, right? Because uh, but, it's I, early yeah. days, but mm. CJ looks good. No, here's but the, right. that's the so, thing that I think that people there's an anecdotal thing to this that I that I that I reject. CJ Stroud is a fucking exception to a rule. Majorly. Of most people miss. Right. I so that's my thing. So like like the right. But I'm decision, saying that is an opportunity that course, you could miss. Right. But the yes. but the but the the amount of times that hits compared to not hitting is fuck. There's a right, you're a data guy. There's a right decision, and mm-hmm. there's, holy shit, it worked out. C.J. Stroud far exceeded anything you could possibly think that he would have coming into the season. The Houston Texans far exceeded anything that anybody could think they were doing this Yeah, season. just because we are we should probably start showing more graphics in 2024 and stuff like that. And we, we have talked about it behind the curtain doing that, um, which would be fun. But there's also expected value, K-Dot. So, like, if you do hit, so... You might have a low probability of hitting, but if you do, the value attached to that is so insanely high relative to what you're describing. So right. it, it's so keep that in mind as well. But I'm just saying it's possible. Justin Fields is a second round pick with also a surefire offensive tackle. To me, that valuation compared to potentially maybe hitting when I got in the first round, I take the two instead of one. I would. Yeah, and it's up for debate, and I would be curious to see what other people think in the comments. It's probably going to be a debate as we go along. No one thing that I don't – what you say? No one's going to agree with me. I, I disagree with that. I All think right. a lot of people would agree with you because it is an intriguing idea. You have a, to me, proven NFL QB, right, in Justin Fields, a freak talent, I think we can all acknowledge, available for just a second-round pick. Now I'm playing devil's advocate back on your side, and you get a short fire or left tackle. It sounds really good, KDOT. I see that. I'm just thinking if, if, and this all starts with the GM and the head coach and the owner, if they all agree that there is one guy that can really elevate us in the draft and they know that they can get him at two, if we stay at two, there's still quite a ways to go in this one week. Take them. That's, that's where I'm at. And you are too. You know, you want to do what the GM and head coach want to do, right? Mostly. That's all we well, talked the, about. The, the, I, I get it, yeah. But there's there's no denying that the like, GM could come in and I'm be like, hey, my I understand and I'm gonna I'm gonna rock with this. It's like being a good soldier. I've always been a better consigliere than than a boss, right? So like the the idea of like I can get behind, I can excel this, but I might internally be like, 
I still like Justin Justin Fields, Joe Alt. Like if yeah. I can, oh, that's if I can fair. That's fair. Around, so you'll say what you need to say, but what yeah. you really feel? Yeah, yeah. No, I got that. Like to me, if somebody tells me that I could leave after April, Washington could have Justin Fields and Joe Alt. I I'm ready to fucking never. You know, I, I was gonna get too graphic. We're gonna go over to the comment mailbag, uh, and we always appreciate the comments over here. And do chime in with what you would rather do. Would you rather take a swing at a QB that you really really like, or or would you trade a second round pick for Justin Fields? Assuming that, and that is the current asking price from this, what people the, are thinking. That's that's what they think market value thought. is. It's the thought because you don't have the long term contract with him. He's basically a one year rental. Yeah, uh, but people also know that they draft Caleb Williams. He can't keep both of the guys on the team probably. Correct. So, yeah. Anyway, it's an intriguing question. I'm glad you brought it up beforehand. Yeah, wait until you get. Wait until you hear my Kirk Cousins take. All right, and to the comment mailbag we go one more time. Uh, beginning with Ridge, where your helmet at? We got 12 comments today, guys. Holy shit. Um, I don't know in what order this all came in, but we're just gonna we're just gonna roll with it. Uh, Ridge, where your helmet at? Goes trade back a few spots, draft a cornerstone left tackle, and gain some assets. Then draft, and I think it's very important. I pronounce it this way based on uh, the all caps. And then draft Penix in round two. Uh, of course, referring to Michael Penix Jr., the Washington quarterback that you can see tonight against Texas should be a fun game there. K dot. Any thoughts Georgia on Georgia was the best team in college football. Um, I'm more, I don't like agreeing with Ridgeway to helmet at. Um, and I also know the only reason he put Phoenix's name in there is because he loves, loves penis. But the idea, this Justin Fields thing is not leaving me alone, man. It's, no, it really it's, isn't. It's, no, that's why I was like, we should just talk like, about it. It's fucking it. Like it's the a chicken idea. conversation. Can you imagine tra- trading back and getting like a couple first round picks? And we also got Justin Fields. Dog, I'm, I'm all so, for oh, it, So man. what you would do, what you would do based on what it, you just described, depending on how trade it, back a few spots, draft a cornerstone, left tackle, gain some assets. Instead of drafting Penix, Phoenix, you're welcome, Rich, where you held it at. Use that second round pick, get Justin Fields. That's another set of intriguing possibilities there. I am always there. for the, um, I, I love knowing what I have. That might be the ideal. That might be the ideal. Trading back getting that left tackle and also then giving a second round pick all intriguing, all, all fun conversations that we are allowed to have now. Again, optimism. That's an exciting conversation that we're allowed to have here. Um, then we go over to Tony. Got it. Shout out Tony. I also think some people have multiple comments. We're just going to bounce back and forth, not do them all consecutively. If we're building an analytics based front office, how long until chat GPT or AI is running the front office? Excellent question to me, Tony. KDOT, your thoughts? I don't, once again, as a frequent user of AI, yep. it wouldn't be that it would be ran by chat GPT, but I do think any front office that exists should be already using chat GPT as a um, supplemental. It's it's another tool in the arsenal. So you know, get rid the, of the human element. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah chat GPT question for you. Mm-hmm. Um, the original... The original model had training data up until like 2020 or something like that. What about the current? Is it just 2021? What about the current one? The current has more updated just knowledge inside. Okay. But the the thing that makes uh, this particular incarnation of it better is it can search the internet for you. So hmm. you can have, you can feed it web pages or uh, more data, or it can run a search for you to then take more updated data to, uh, I will say the way I'm thinking about chat GPT in in the front office perspective, it would probably just it would probably give you more of the group think, right? As opposed to maybe its own unique idea. I think it's to me, if I was looking at it once again, I, I mean, I don't know even how we're to still figuring out what this is uh, right. as it goes. Yeah, yeah. But like if you fed it the information on um, if you gave it the stats of every for top five first round quarterback drafted. Um, and then gave it all the stats that they've had, gave it maybe the stats of where the teams were, and then you could come out with a model and saying, all right, based on this information, what do you think the safest bet to do in this particular thing? What does the data show for this particular? It can do the data crunching um, in very in easy, simplistic form that you would usually build what you'd spend a day building a Better model yet. for. Better yet, ask it the Justin Fields question. We then go over to the Hawk TV. Shout out the Hawk TV. 
three for three gents if you include me with Jaden Daniels. So last after the pod, uh, KDOT and I both agreed that Jaden Daniels is the QB we would want over here if we were to draft one in the first round. However, watch Caleb Williams throw the football and said, ooh, that is the Hawk TV chiming in. Appreciate that. Then we have uh, Earl Bruce Brissett may be out with an injury. Nothing about paddleboat. Ron suggests that he is a capable coach or GM. Thanks, Snyder. Uh, one unfortunate thing that has occurred over the course of the season is that we've gone from Riverboat Ron to Paddleboat Ron, and that that has been that's been tough to watch. Okay, that mm-hmm. has been tough. You're asking Chad GPT right now, yeah? I am. Yep, figured. All right, and then we go back to the Hawk TV. What's up, gents? Prior to watching this episode, see, this is what I mean by out of order. What's up, Jez? Prior to watching this episode, I peeked at the injury report, and it's not pretty for us. 70 Burger, here we go. Hashtag worst to first. Uh, just the 27. We held an opponent to under 30 points. Uh, San Francisco did help by just being on cruise control, but nonetheless, under 30 points is under 30 points. Then we go over to Jess Anto. The irony in all of this is that Rivera just spent four years building a team to just plug and play a quarterback. Ron's horrible. If the new GM isn't in love with any of these top three quarterback prospects, he could still possibly trade back to sixth or seventh and still manage to draft alt while gaining a ton of draft capital. That's how you build fast. Patrick Queen Mm -hmm. is set to be a free agent this year. This team desperately needs him. He could play middle linebacker and keep Davis and Hudson on the sides. That would be an athletic group. This comment I absolutely love because I think you and I, KDOT, completely agree with that. If there is no QB that you like absolutely fall in love with that is the consensus pick in your front office move back absolutely move back because i'm sure there's another franchise that would be more than happy to jump to two and give you all sorts of stuff for it and then maybe we go the justin fields route or maybe you know what the old front office would have done traded for russ because we did that with the carson wentz thing it's not that far off crazy stuff man Mm -hmm. what ownership can change things uh the patrick queen thing i don't see them allowing him to leave baltimore I will say that I'd be shocked, but if they do I, cool. I mean, if we have the director of player personnel and also Mike McDonald, he might force the issue. I mean, that would be whew. Patrick queen over here would be super cool. Just from a leadership standpoint too, help helping set that tone. If we were to get Mike McDonald and some others, we'll see. All right, uh, can I, can I hop in real quick? Yes, you may. So I've been talking back and forth, with GPT. So it Hi, says GPT. trading a second round pick for Justin Fields could be a strategic move for the Washington commanders, especially if they believe Fields has the potential to be their franchise quarterback. This approach has several advantages. Number one, proven talent. Number two, addressing other needs by acquiring quarterback through the draft. Washington can use their high draft pick in another position. Mm-hmm. Immediate impact. Fields can make an immediate impact given this NFL apparent. That uh, involves risk. The value of a proven NFL quarterback versus a top college quarterback is a complex assessment, but based on the information given might be a prudent move. Okay. Seems like it's in between. Then we go over to Vinda. I think that's an approval. Okay. Justin Fields. Might be a prudent move is an approval. That's all I need. All right. Over to Vinda. Fields McDonald 2024. (laughs) JD is him. Jaden Daniels is him. But I want to see us go with left tackle. I I honestly love the discourse because for the longest time, if again, we're drafting outside the top three or we don't agree on the QB, I want the left tackle. And I want to be very, very clear about that. I've been saying that all season. And then it was like, okay, if if we're truly this bad at QB, then and you have the opportunity. So Jaden Daniels is him, but I want to see us go with left tackle. Honestly, I really I really, we will have a better understanding, really feel we will have a better understanding following this season. I could see the next staff trading back, especially with the amount of picks we have. So we're, we're beginning to sort of form the correct way of thinking. You know, if you don't agree with that QB trade back, get as many assets as you can help this new front office ownership group, be able to build the team in their shape and image. Uh, We then go over to Tony once again. Tony. Shout out, Tony. If we happen to land Caleb Williams, am I the only one getting RG3 vibes? Is he good enough to run an offense from the pocket? If he struggles, does he throw the receivers and O-line under the bus like RG3? That is the question from Tony. KDOT, your answer? I'm not going RG3 vibes. I, I think RG3 was a lot more athletic than Caleb Williams is. 
I think the the thing that scares me when anything about the Caleb Williams thing is the 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 person they always love to compare him to is Patrick Mahomes. Uh, I think that's because like off schedule playing. Um, it's and, also the N- NFL draft is just fantasy land. They they, they are always like shit. this is the next Mahomes. This is the next Josh Allen. You know how hard that is. I'm saying that saying we no, I draft get the QB. It. It, it's it, it's ridiculous. But I think what a lot of people need to understand about the RG three to here in the success rate is look at the coaching staff that we had during that period of time with RG three. Remember Kyle Shanahan here. Remember the guys that they had. Miami Dan. All these guys, right? They built an offense and that run pass option that kind of that worked perfectly for what it is that RG three was doing. The marriage of that coach quarterback thing even if Mike Shanahan didn't want it initially and Kirk Cousins was more his guy was almost perfection it was lightning in a bottle I don't know if RG3 has the exact same I don't know if RG3's 2020 2012 is similar anywhere else compared to what it is the success he had I would agree with that I would agree so I, with that. I, I would hate to compare Caleb Williams and also knowing that the Shanahan's are not walking through that door yeah with their offensive schemes um, in terms of, I don't get RG three vibes from Caleb. I don't know enough about his character, uh, to be able to it's a good dude. say whether, yeah. So I, I assume he is like, yeah. Um, I do w- wonder about the pocket though, because whenever I was watching USC, get, like they gave him tons of time, mm-hmm. tons of time. And so I almost feel like it's tougher. I'm just a fan, right? Like for me to evaluate like Caleb Williams, just because, you know, if he has all day, I think a lot of QBs would look good. Uh, but you can't deny his talent. His talent, the way he throws, it, like that's the balance. He's special. There's a there's a reason people are all going like goo goo gaga over the guy. It's the um, balance. But you could say the exact same thing about C.J. Stroud in Ohio State. Like he was true from a pretty clean fucking pocket. That, so like that's why it's hard to tell. Right. That's the thing. Evaluating quarterbacks is the. I think that's why you're starting to see everybody kind of have cold throwing cold water on this is the not aspect, me, buddy. I'm going for it. Well, as far as drafting a quarterback this early is the re is that there are so many different variables at stake yeah. to try to make this decision. And there's no telling where the fuck it's going to end up at the end of the day. There's no real way to do it. There is no single philosophy that'll net you um, a surefire thing, drafting top three, the most you can do, the most you can do is create a team and a system that will utilize any quarterback you pick yeah. if taught properly. Just as you mentioned with the Shanahan's being cure. Look at San RG2. Francisco. Brock yeah. Purdy's Mr. Fucking Irrelevant. Jimmy Garoppolo looks like absolute dog shit in Vegas. They get the best out of their guys because they know what they're doing. And all they do is if they do end up getting that top flight talent, it's, it looks even cooler. Hold on, but it's also important to note, again, you can make points in both directions, and now I'm making one against drafting one that high. They took Trey Lance, and they traded up like crazy. And it, did, and right. it didn't work. It did not so, work. I'm willing to be balanced on the topic, Kato. Uh, We then go over to the Hawk TV. Shout out the Hawk TV. Best scenario for Washington fans alike, we land with the number two or number three overall pick so far on track and field trade offers where we can draft the franchise left tackle and QB. For example, going from two to four and getting multiple first or second round picks. Get out your reaction. I saw you look up for a moment. I So here's the thing. I That to me looks like my dream scenario. Because right now, Joe Alt, who's my number one guy, um, mm-hmm. It tackle doesn't seem to be in the same conversation as Olafashuna. Olafashanu, there you Olafishanu. go. There you go. Proud of you. Um, he's not in that same conversation. He's not in the same conversation with Marvin Harrison, right? But the idea that you could trade back, still get a Joe Alt, add potentially another first rounder, and then trade a second rounder because you'll get another one for Justin Fields just fits. It's a fun time to talk about all this. It's a fun time. Oh, here we go. And then we got Blood Clot. Shout out Blood Clot. Happy New Year's, fellas. Happy New Year, Blood Clot. Happy New Year. My draft wish, if we're still pick three, is still left tackle Olufushanu. We need to solidify the line, and I don't see anyone letting any top-tier tackles go into free agency. It's too much of a hot commodity. So we would just be bargain bin shopping again. We cannot let our line be an issue again. Our second pick is high enough to be considered a late first-round pick. This is true. This is where I would get a quarterback. Okay, so he would actually go left tackle first round, 
early second round, which we're considering a late first round pick, just given its overall number, he would select, or I would, blood clot, select J.J. McCarthy from Michigan. He's been coached by Harbaugh and is the most NFL-ready quarterback. He's projected to go in the early second round, so it's perfect. He's only 20. He's 6'3", 202 pounds. And here's an interesting quote from Sports Illustrated in November. Hey, way to bring up citations in here. Appreciate that. that. Go ahead, blood clot. Since that time, McCarthy has an overall record of 22 and one as a starter, giving him a 957 winning percentage in that role. He's been so good that his winning percentage is the highest of any quarterback over the last 10 seasons with a minimum of 20 starts, putting him at the top of a very impressive list. So the guy, all he does is win at Michigan and you get to see him today against Alabama. Man, fun day. Fun day today. Fun conversations. That's an excellent, that's an excellent comment, blood clot. What do you think? JJ McCarthy, early second round? Not sold. Um, to me, it's so this goes into like long term philosophical thinking when it comes to building a team. I love the idea of picking up a late first, early second round guy who's shown that he's a winner if you have the team built. Um, that goes back into my San Francisco philosophy, like Bill or Kansas City philosophy of building the team and then getting the guy to come in where he doesn't have to deal with as much adversity, right? Where right. I don't need to worry about him being able to run because the offensive line is not good enough. But to me, the reason you trade for Justin Fields is that you'll still be in that. There are always guys like JJ McCarthy that redo exist. the drop box and just put Justin Fields on there. I, get, I mean, please continue. I don't know how, but the <laughs> the idea that, um, you'll always have an opportunity to do that. Every year, there are guys that are just proven winners at the college level that don't necessarily have the same athleticism that some of the top guys are having, right? But to me, is like, you'll always have the option to do that. Build the rest of the team out first before you do it. I wouldn't want to J- – I JJ could come here, but I wouldn't start him at all for a season or two. Yeah, we we're, I think we're on the same page about sitting the QB. Like, even if we took one top two, top three, whatever it is, I want them to sit as well as you. Well, then we get in the conversation the with the bridge quarterback thing. Kirk Cousins. We go to Tony. Also, I do understand starting Jacoby Brissett to save Howell, but I think the real reason Jacoby Brissett is starting is to save Eric Bieniemy's play calling abilities for a better chance at a future job. Appreciate the comment there, Tony. I you think we touched on that last week. We were talking about this being an Eric Bieniemy move because there is still that slight chance that he could either save his job here or still become a head coach or maybe an offensive coordinator somewhere else. So it, it made total sense to us when we when we broke it down. No, I feel sad for him. It did not work out. Yep, because Sam, man, what what an insane situation. Uh, and then we conclude with Vindo. And thanks again for all the comments, guys. Shout out, Vindo. Never thought the Eagles would bail us out like that. It's crazy. There is a real possibility we could have Caleb. The way JT is playing, I just don't see them getting him. It wouldn't make sense, but for real, for real though, whoever gets hired to draft will have a gold mine of players to choose from. Probably one of the best drafts we will see in the 2020s. I reshare a strange feeling we take Daniels. I wouldn't care as long as I trust the offensive coordinator, which will not be Eric Bieniemy. Eric Bieniemy. Oh, hold on. This part I. I E B stays guaranteed. Oh, if Eric Bieniemy, there was a missing F there. If Eric Bieniemy stays guaranteed taking Williams without question. Thoughts? Maybe I'm uh, the. I'm going to put this out here, and I'm gonna, I'm I'm going to state my claim here on this particular mountain. If even Washington, I know it's an impossibility, but if uh, if Chicago drafts Marvin Harrison number one mm-hmm. for some fucking stupid reason, and we're picking two, stupid. and we're picking two. For his benefit and ours, I don't want Caleb Williams in a commander's uniform. I'm I out. agree with you. I think he is the most talented. I think he is probably. I think he's the most talented quarterback in the draft. I might be higher on Jaden Daniels, um, but I think out the gate, the most ready to make stuff happen to me is Caleb Williams, and I don't want him here. I want him to have a long and fruitful career. I am rooting for that motherfucker so hard. I don't want it here. Well, I I don't think those are the reasons I 
don't want him here. I think he can have a long and fruitful career over here. I think that we've just had situations in the past where we've had the hometown guy come yeah, back. Or I thought, yeah, he, I would, that what we said last week, right? Sure. So like, yeah, yeah, that's my reasoning. But I'm stick. But I want it to make so that nobody can question where it is. My philosophy is on it. I'm out on Caleb Williams here in Washington. I just I don't want the hometown kid. Again, the, the way I would rank them right now, this is as of right now, and everything can change. And it's important to know that because you're going to hear a lot of stuff when, as you take in other media as well and you're figuring it out. Um, right now, I have Jaden Daniels 1, Caleb Williams 2A, Drake May 2B, something like that. Like Maybe Drake May even a little higher, actually. Um, but then this idea of another UNC QB after we've seen like Mitch Trubisky, you got Sam Howell here already. Oh, what a bad feeling that is. So... That's that's why I think I have Caleb slightly higher, but Drake May in isolation actually is fairly good in my opinion. But again, this is all as of now. Still plenty of discourse up ahead. We're going to get even more information uh, after this Cowboys game, and we are going to preview that Cowboys game and have just more fun conversations like this one. And so we appreciate you guys listening. This was the Common Mailbag, and this is District Divided, a DC sports podcast, more specifically, a Washington Commanders podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening today. A very happy new year to all of you. I am Amit, that is KDOT. And if you enjoyed the episode, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, comment as you always do. Plenty of comments today. Appreciate that. And KDOT, share this shit. Share this shit. Greatly appreciate it. Enjoy college football tonight. Enjoy your day. Enjoy the year. We will see you guys on Friday, 2 p.m. with the preview episode against the Dallas Cowboys. Until then, cousins, take it easy. In D.C., we're just hoping that you listen. 